but I wanted to turn it to you, Tony, like you've, you know, not only done, done a lot of writing yourself, but you've put together um, a lot of anthologies where you're, you know, thinking about how to, you know, pair multiple stories with one another. Um, I'm, I'm interested in, you know, where, where do you start when you're, when you're creating, you know, Sid or, or a, a type of, a type of creature, like what, what is, what do you find is often the, the process of real life inspiration becoming a type of character for you? Maybe one of the hardest parts is always trying to do something different. And that's really kind of how I ended up with Sid. It's because um, I was between series, which means my series had been canceled and the one I was trying to sell was not selling. So I was trying to think, well, what's what's popular in mysteries these days? And it's like, well, a lot of, and my editor said, paranormal, historical, and crafts. She says, please do not send me a craft. And it's like, okay, so I'm thinking paranormal. And I thought, well, you know, I could, I, I don't really want to do vampires. I mean, my best friend, Charlene Harris, no, she's doing those. And werewolves, yeah, Dane and Patricia pretty much have those wrapped up, leave them alone. What can I do this different? So I started going through, you know, Jim Butcher's got the warlock for hire. We've got witches, we've got cats, uh, we've got ghosts, we've got ghost cats. All these different things were being done in Paranormal Mystery. What was left? And for some reason, nobody was doing a skeleton mystery. Why? I don't know. It just never occurred to anyone else because they weren't drinking the same thing I was, I guess. <laughs> so I um, started, so Sid was pretty much based on what can I do different. And I'm going to tell you this. I just found this out this morning and I don't know whether I should be amused, pleased, or really mad. Somebody has just published a novel with the sidekick skeleton character, another cozy mystery. Wow. And really? Like, I guess that's the, you know, flattery. I don't know. She, I mean, she may, may have never heard of mine, not like mine are world famous or anything, but still. Um, but as far as- okay to have more than one feeling about a thing. Yeah, I know, yeah. kind of, I'm mixed, it's mixed. My husband's like, you know, should I go take her out? What, you know, I'm like, yeah, maybe not. But I was thinking about a short story I did. So the first urban fantasy, this really urban fantasy I wrote was a story for Charlene from my first anthology, which was Many Bloody Returns. And what you're talking about putting things together, Dana, this was putting together vampires and birthdays because vampires have more birthdays than anyone else because they live so long. Um, so, you know, we thought this was a great idea. And then I realized I had to write something. And someone said, what are your story going to be? And I said, um, it's going to be how Stella got her grave back. And I had no idea where I was going to go with that other than it was going to be a vampire and a birthday. And what I was trying to do was, again, to do something that other people hadn't done. And in most time, vampire stories, uh, the, when a vampire is a new vampire, they have to sleep a long time. And as they become older and more powerful, they can stay awake more, they can endure the sun more, and they can do more tricks and things. And I thought, well, what if you've got a baby vampire? And what if you've got a baby, you know, he's just become a vampire. And I kind of did it backwards that he can stay up he can stay out during the day. He just has to wear a lot of sunscreen. And, you know, he keeps hoping for the day when he's just living on blood, but he still has to eat food now. And he can't mesmerize anyone. All he does is stare at them. And they stare back. And he stares at them again. And it does absolutely nothing. And again, I was just trying to do something different. So whenever with, you know, with, even with my own series, that's always the challenge is like, what have I not done before? I always want to do something different that not everyone's doing because if I'm reading all these other ladies and they're doing things so well it's like yeah I'm not no I'm not messing with that which is why I thought I was safe with the skeleton started <laughs> it brings up a really interesting like it, it almost gives me an image of like a broader shared extended universe that exists between the extended universes of each author um which it it you know, where, where they, your, your own books live alongside one another, but there's also, you know, the awareness of the larger genre and how, you know, you mentioned, Tony, how you're, you know, somebody's vamp, this is, this is Charlene's vampires. It's, you know, each, each other has their own vampires. Um, how do you think about that when you're, you know, assembling an, an anthology? Like, does that, the ideas of shared genre, genre as a universe almost? Well, Caroline can speak to this too. Basically, we just picked, when we were doing it, we would just invite people whose work we liked. We didn't, yeah. I don't think we worried about assembling them that way. We assembled the authors in that way. We tried to get, a, you know, new people. We ended up getting a lot of mystery people because we were both in the mystery world originally. Um, 
we ran into a couple of people like, I've always wanted to write a werewolf story, which is Nancy Pickard, who's an award-winning mystery writer. And it's like, really? This was on your, this was on your bucket list? It's like, We're, let us in. Um, and it just kind of, once we assembled the writers and invited them, I don't think we ended up turning down maybe two out of the seven anthologies that didn't just, just didn't quite fit in. So it was just kind of, it was assembling the people, it was assembling the Justice League rather than the particular issues of the comic. <laughs> well, the Justice League of, oh, Charlene, Charlene? She's muted. Oh, you might be muted. <laughs> No, hey. Hey. We, would, we would send out our, uh, we would think of a guest list to ask people to submit stories and uh, we got, we would get really excited. It was just like putting on a really good party and you hope people yeah. would come. And honestly, the first one was pretty, did pretty well, the first anthology. So uh, people looked forward to getting invited and uh, people would start hinting that they would like to be invited, you know. Um, more subtle than others. <laughs> yeah, subtle or not so subtle. Uh, well, the but, thing, one thing about your anthologies was that there's not much of a market for short stories the way there was maybe 40 years ago. And a lot of writers I know got into writing novels by writing short stories. So getting invited into an anthology that is edited by you folks is a really big jump up. It's a, it's a really, for midlist authors, this is a really good way to get, get new readers um, that, that, that are hard to find now. So um, we writers really in, appreciate you anthologists too. We had a good time doing it. Uh, it really was a very smooth and harmonious process for us. Uh, I never made a Tony doll and stabbed it. Um, we just we just got along real well and we enjoyed the same things and we agreed that the same stories that didn't work how we could ask the writer to fix them uh so it was really one of the most fun things i've ever done yeah i miss them i really do um, what i liked about the series of uh, of the anthologies was that as a reader nothing looked the same from one story to the next within one collection Every single thing was vastly different. And as a writer, what I really enjoyed was the constraints because I find it interesting to figure out a problem that you say, okay, it's gonna be werewolves in the holidays. And that gives, it, gives you a really, instead of having to write the whole world, you have a like very specific set of things and it's just a great puzzle to solve. And so, uh, and I got some novels out of it. So I also thank you. <laughs> We actually, we were godmother, very godmother to a couple of different series. Alan Gordon wrote a novel based on his short story world. Um, and, and Dana's probably our most successful. But then we've got Mike Carey, who wrote a short story for an the Apple for the anthology. Oh. Yeah, an apple for yeah. the creature. <laughs> and he then expanded it to a novel that did really well. He's done sequels to it, and it got made into a movie with Glenn Close. Yep. S.J. <laughs> Roseanne? Oh yes, S.J. Zerzan. 